When it comes to lat exercises, there are no shortage of options. However, which lat exercises do you focus on? If you're struggling to build a bigger, wider back right now, you're gonna to wanna to watch to the end of this video because I'm gonna give you the two lat exercises that you need to focus on if you wanna start seeing your best results. Now, others may want you to believe that there are only two exercises that you need and that all other lat exercises just don't provide any additional benefit. That's not what I'm saying. But if you don't have these two boxes checked in combination with each other, you're gonna to struggle to build your best lats possible. With this bare minimum approach, you can be assured of the fact that you're going to have an effective combination of lat exercises to use and more so be able to focus on fewer things so you can get to where you want to be faster. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, athletenext.com. So you might be surprised to hear me say only two because if you follow me for any length of time, you know we got a lot of back building content on this channel. But that might be the problem because when I say lats, you think back. But what you should think of is just one thing, the latissimus dorsi. And it's that muscle right there. And as always the case, if you let the anatomy tell you what to do, it's gonna actually guide you to the exact two exercises that you should focus on. Now, as I said before, it's not the only two exercises that you should ever do, but if you only could do two, these should be the ones. And the first thing you have to do is follow the fibers and also follow the science, because we know that applying a stretch to a muscle gives us a chance to create hypertrophy if there's load applied as well. Well, the attachments are going to be up here on the arm and down here at the hip. So if you could just figure out an exercise that does that and does it really well, you'll be on the right track. And my first line exercise of choice is going to be the kneeling single arm pull down. Now, maybe you're doing pull downs already and you think you got that box checked, but I'm talking specifically about the kneeling single arm pull down. And here's why. Remember, in order to apply that stretch that can mediate new growth, we have to do this in a way that's going to create maximum stretch and allow for the lats to go through their full range of motion. So by kneeling, I'm able to get my arm not just up overhead, but also it's taking the attachment point specifically of the upper arm and the hip as far away from each other as I possibly can. Now, when you're trying to build the upper outer portion of the lats, the vertical pulling exercises are going to be your best bet. But by doing this exercise this way, you're gonna be able to get the best effect of it. And what I'm doing is first grabbing this handle with a pronated grip. And the reason why I'm doing that is I wanna to try to decrease the bicep contribution to the exercise. Cause I could easily turn it this way and turn it into some variation of a curl, which is just gonna take away some of the effect on your lats. If I can pronate my handle at the top, I can decrease some of that contribution. At that point, I wanna make sure that I'm almost fixing my elbow in place, right? So it's going along for the ride. And at that point, you're also trying to shift your focus to the elbow because it's almost like a pointer, like an arrow. And that arrow should point right down at that hip. So if I can bring it down and get it as far as I can, keeping it tight to my side, I'm gonna hit the lap. But if I can just lean a little bit more and point it right into my hip, I'm gonna get the biggest contraction I could possibly get on the lats. Again, taking them through their full range of motion. Big giant stretch, arm out in front of us. Down, lock in that angle, and drive it right down into your hip. The point here, guys, is the first exercise has to be one that takes advantage of the stretch. This one does exactly that, and it does it very specifically. But then we gotta go back to the board to look at the anatomy again to get exercise number two, because this is where I think people kind of mess things up. Because they think that only the vertical pulling exercises are best at building bigger lats, but that's just not true because if you look at how big the lats actually are and you focus on this portion and the attachments all over the spine, up and down the thoracic, lumbar, and even into your sacrum, you realize that somehow you have to get these fibers to do their job and that is to pull the arm towards the center or midline of your back. Well, the best way to do this is gonna be with a row, but again, a very specific type of row. Because if you were to do this with a wide arm position like this, what's gonna happen? The fibers that are best positioned to pull this arm this way are gonna be the muscles that are up in this area. And we're talking about different muscles in the lats, like the rhomboids or the middle traps. That's not how we do it. We gotta get this elbow back down tight and then pull back behind our body like you see me doing here. This is a properly performed row if you want to overload the lats. And again, that's key because the lat muscles are overloaded with heavier weight just like any other muscle. And a great stimulus for hypertrophy and growth is going to be the use of heavier weights. I don't know of many exercises that do a better job on building the lats than a row. Now the one limitation is that you don't have the same full range of motion that you did on the kneeling one arm pull down, but again, these are meant to complement each other perfectly. What you are getting is that all important secondary function of the lats, and you're doing a really good job of applying weight to it. Now let's say your back isn't so great, and every time you do a row, it doesn't feel so good. 
Well, it doesn't mean that you can't do all rows. You could do a chest supported row because this is going to take that factor out of the equation and still allow you to get the benefits of this exercise. In a chest supported position, all the focus should be on your ability to simply pull with these lats and get your elbows back behind you without having to worry about stabilizing with your lower back. Now, I'm not saying that's the best way to forever perform your rows. Obviously, you'd like to transition yourself to a point where you could do it on your feet, but it gives you the chance to reap the benefits of the exercise without having to sacrifice one of the only two exercises that you need to do. And so now with the word lats, hopefully no longer triggering the entire back for you, you've got a one-two combination to effectively not just build the width of your back, but also the thickness. If you're looking for the only two exercises you need for your biceps, I'm gonna link that one for you here, and also for your shoulders, I'll put that one for you here. If you're looking for a complete program, guys, you can find it over at athletics.com. Make sure you click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when I put one out. See you soon.